Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. So today is the day where we are going to be going over the biggest changes coming to next patch being patch point 822. This is going to be the final patch where we end off a ranked season 8, so it's a pretty important patch. So if you guys end up enjoying the video, then don't forget to hit that like button. But this video is also going to be made in collaboration as usual with Pro Guys. It's a website that helps you improve your overall League of Legends gameplay and knowledge, especially now with the season only being about a week away from ending. I have a link to the website down below definitely recommend checking it out so starting things off for the video and speaking of the season actually ending there are going to be of course end of season rewards so let's go over that very quickly so if you reach at least gold the biggest office reward that you'll be getting is of course going to be victorious oriana which is this year's victorious skin also, if you reach at least gold, you'll be getting a new summoner icon, the victorious actual chroma for the victorious Oriana skin, and of course, also the honor award skin. And last but not least, the select few that actually reach challenger elo will get the above, but they'll also get the amazing, the luscious, the beautiful challenger backpack. Now taking a look at the screen, you can see here all the different summoner icons that you get based on obviously the elo that you finish at, obviously ranging from bronze all the way to challenger. Now there are going to be three different icons per rank and it varies based on where you actually got the rank in. So for instance, you have the leftmost icons being for solo queue, the middle icons if you reach that elo in flex queue, and the rightmost icons being for the 3v3 queue. I have to say, the 3v3 queue for Twisted Tree Line actually look probably the best and I'm a little bit disappointed man, kind of wish I grinded that now. But now let us move on to the actual balance changes coming for this patch. Starting things off is going to be a Kali. I'm sure a lot of people are happy about this one. And the first change is going to be towards her W, probably the most infamous ability in her kit. The cooldown on this ability is actually being increased to now being 21 seconds at rank 1 rather than 17 but as you rank it up it does end up being at 11 seconds by rank 5 regardless so this will definitely make her laning phase a tad weaker and make her just kind of less aggressive in the laning phase because as most of the colleagues what they do is the second the w is off of cooldown you just abuse that in the laning phase and you just spam Qs, spam trades and it's really hard to trade back with her inside her w so it does make her laning phase once she gets level 2 quite powerful but on the flip side most of the colleagues do max their W second, so this nerf will only affect the laning phase, and as you actually start doing team fights, you'll probably have your W close to rank 5, if not rank 5 already. But it doesn't stop there just yet, because as you can see here, her ultimate's damage once again has also been changed. So the earlier parts of her ultimate are actually a tad weaker, 15 less damage. The second level of her ultimate is actually the exact same, being 150, but the rank 3 ultimate is actually 15 increased damage. So once again, just kind of lowering the overall power that Akali has at the earlier parts, especially during the laning phase, but as you rank up and as you level up and get to mid to late game, you'll be just as strong, if not even stronger. Moving along, we also have some quick nerfs coming over to LeBlanc, yet another mid laner that is extremely aggressive, one that I personally ban almost every single game because I just hate facing LeBlancs. The nerf to her is as follows, it's going to be towards her W distortion where the damage has been lowered by 10 at every single rank. So this one definitely feels like a little bit of a slap on the wrist, but her W is her most oppressive ability in the laning phase. You max it first, so you not only rely on it for wave clear, but you also rely on it for most of your damage in the laning phase because, again, you do max it first. So this nerf will still definitely hit her a bit, but I don't think this will make LeBlanc pretty much unplayable. I think she'll still be relatively strong in the mid lane and still a relatively powerful, aggressive assassin in the earlier parts of the game. Next up, we have a quick buff coming over to our favorite tree, Maokai. The buff is going to be towards his E ability sapling toss, where the percent of the target's max health as damage has been changed to starting at 6% up to 8% to now starting at 7% and still going up to only 8%. So it technically scales less as you level it up, but overall it is still stronger. This will obviously make him a lot more powerful in the laning phase, especially if you're facing another tank. But on top of this, most Maokai players actually max Sapling Toss either last or second last. So, I mean, this is actually quite a decent buff because it'll make it just so much more powerful of a level 1 ability. You're getting a full flat 1% increase from leaving it at the exact same level as you would normally. But moving along, we also have some buffs coming over to Nunu and Willump. And starting things off is going to be actually increasing their base AD by 
four. Now that's actually not bad considering that this champion does like to auto attack a decent amount because of blood boil, which I guess now is their passive, but you get the idea. But it doesn't stop there just yet because as we move on to the Q ability, consume, the percent of bonus health as healing has been increased by three percent. That's actually quite generous. So this will not only make Nunu's clear just overall healthier and easier to do, but when Nunu goes in for those ganks, especially in the earlier parts of the game, those auto attacks are going to do a little bit more damage, which is obviously a welcoming sight. But on top of this, whenever you consume people, you'll also be a lot more, I guess, sustainable in teamfights because of the extra HP now you'll get back thanks to the buff for consume. Following this, we have some interesting changes coming over to Pike, and Pike is, of course, a somewhat controversial champion because he is an assassin in the support role. So this is something you definitely want to pay attention to. So starting things off with this passive, Gift of the Drowned Ones, the percent of max health able to be stored as gray health has actually been changed from being 25% up to 50% to now being a flat 80 health plus 8% percent bonus attack damage capping out at 60 percent max hp so in other words just to put it more simply it doesn't work as an ability in itself as well anymore unless of course you actually build attack damage items rather than just going the typical aftershock into maybe a black cleaver into just pure tank and you'll notice this new trend across the rest of the abilities as they get changed so as we move on to his w ghost water dive you can see the mana cost has been lowered by 15 which is actually a decent buff and the movement speed has been changed from starting as 60% up to 80% scaling off of bonus AD to now being 40% plus 1.5% per point of lethality. So this is going to be the interesting part There's a lot of stuff scaling off of lethality now so Rad is essentially forcing you to build of course lethality. This will make Pike a lot more of an interesting champion for sure because if you build lethality and you actually pop off I think it's going to be a lot more snowball-y but on the flip side if you don't pop off or if you aren't really kind of comfortable in the champion or make mistakes it'll be much more punishing. Next, we have his E ability, Phantom Undertow, where the stun duration has been changed from starting at 1.1 seconds up to 1.5 seconds to now starting at 1.1 and increasing by 0.1 per 10 lethality, max being 1.84. So if you go a full lethality build, it's actually going to be somewhat of a buff, but if you're too scared or for whatever reason you only go one lethality, it's not actually going to be much better. In fact, it's actually going to be worse. And of course, the mana cost being lowered by 10 as well is a welcoming sight. But last but not least, his ultimate, Death from Below. The Execute now also scales with Lethality, being 1.5 health per 1 point of Lethality. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this seems like a straight buff because the base values have not been changed, the bonus AD scaling on this ability has not been changed, so you just get an absolute bonus scaling of Lethality on top of everything else that already exists, so it makes this ultimate a lot more deadly. But all in all for Pike, I mean these are interesting changes to say the least, I think this will make Pike potentially better if I do say so myself, if it's an experienced Pike player that happens to know what they're doing. But if it's an autofilled Pike or someone that is uncomfortable with the champion, I think they might be overall worse, especially if they don't go for the lethality route. Next up, we have some quick changes coming over to Shrundle being his chomp ability, where the bonus damage has been increased by 20 by rank 5, but the same at rank 1, so it only scales up as you rank up the ability. And AD ratio on this ability has been increased by 10% at every rank to now actually having a 10% at rank 1, as opposed to before being 0%. Next, we have some nerfs coming over to Victor, arguably one of the most overpowered champions in League of Legends at the very moment, period. So, starting things off with his Q ability being the biggest offender of them all, the nerf is as follows. The discharge damage has been lowered by 20 as you rank it up to rank 5, being the same at rank 1, and the discharge AP ratio has been increased by 5%. Interesting. Following that, we have his ultimate Chaos Storm, where the discharge damage has been lowered by 20 at rank 1 and a total of 60 by rank 3, but the discharge AP ratio has been increased by 15%. So I have to say, it's not the best nerf, at least not what I was looking for. So what they did here is the fact that, well, most victors now go for a kind of tanky-ish build with Iceborne Gauntlet and whatnot, and they're just doing so much damage regardless of building a lot of AP or not. This will make it so that they actually have to build more AP to do the same damage. Now, don't get me wrong, that's fine, but the biggest offender I don't think is necessarily the damage. I mean, even though that is, of course, something that is an issue, but the laning phase and just how much he can abuse his Q and how often he gets his Q shield and how often he gets the movement speed to trade with and how hard it is to trade back, I think that is where it really, really stems from. So I'm a little bit disappointed that the Q cooldown has not been increased. Now the last couple of things I want to quickly talk about, and I don't think these changes are coming yet. I think these are pre-season changes, but I'm not 100%. It's going to be the Dark Harvest rework. Now I did a gameplay on the PBE server of the Dark Harvest rework, showing it off on Zed, and it feels 
busted. But since the time that I personally played it on the PvE server, it has received a nerf, but essentially the rework is as follows. Damaging a champion below 50% health deals adaptive damage and harvests their soul, permanently increasing the Dark Harvest damage by 6. Dark Harvest damage is 20 to 60 based on level. Scales plus 6 damage per soul, plus 25% bonus AD, plus 50% AP with a 45 second cooldown that resets on takedown. Now keep in mind, this procs anything. You don't have to auto attack them. You can use an ability. You can do literally whatever to proc the damage. All you have to do is just damage the champion below 50% HP. So assassins that reset especially seem extremely strong with this. Even mages could actually abuse this really hard as well. So this is going to be an interesting keystone one to watch out for when it does finally hit the live servers. On top of this, we have also a couple of new changes coming over to runes and just new runes in general. One of them being called Shield Bash that takes the place of bone plating. So thank God that's gone. But Shield Bash does the following. While shielded, gain 1 to 10 bonus armor or magic resistance. And whenever you gain a new shield, your next basic attack against a champion deals bonus damage that also scales off of bonus HP and also off of the new shield amount, adaptive damage. So in other words, if you're a champion that self shields, it's very powerful. Or if you're maybe laning bot lane and you have a Janna or something like that, this actually could be a decent thing to take for AD carries. We also have Overgrowth that has a completely new effect that states the following. Absorb life essence for monsters or enemy minions that die near you, permanently gaining 3 maximum HP for every 8. When you've absorbed 120 monsters or enemy minions, gain an additional 2.5% maximum HP, so obviously exceptionally good on champions like maybe Scion. And the final thing is Time Warp Tonic, receiving a new effect as well that states the following, consuming a potion or biscuit grants 50% of its health or mana restoration instantly, but puts that consumable on a short cooldown. In addition, gain 5% movement speed while under their effects, and the cooldown is equal to the duration of the consumable. So this can actually make things a little bit more interesting whenever you're fighting you can just instantly proc a potion and then instantly get the hp back which can surprise the enemy it's like a mini heal if you will but on the flip side i think this will make it a lot worse when you take it to try and sustain through the laning phase because it just doesn't really do the same thing anymore but either way, guys, that is going to be about it for this video. There you have it. Some massive changes coming out to next patch being patch point 822. Don't forget, this is the final patch of the season. This is the patch that season 8 will end on. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely hit the like button. Good luck to the final week of ranked. I hope you get the rank that you're trying to go for. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next video as well. Make sure to share this with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. And all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.